All right, hello. Today is July 30th, 2019. Welcome to Plant Based Homestead Preppers channel. My name is Roderick Chappelle. I don't think I ever introduced myself properly. And I do have another channel by that name. I also have a Facebook group, which is fastingweightloss.info. If any of you care to join us and find out how, together my wife and I have lost about 120 pounds together in the last six months. <clears throat> Because we are getting ourselves prepped for our future. So, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. So, today I want to talk to you. And every Tuesday, just so you know, I try to upload two to three videos. And it's usually about current events. Definitely going to be about the plant-based life. Um, homesteading, from what, I, you know, from what I know. And being a prepper. But I want to talk to you guys about the food shortage that keeps happening, and I am seeing it in my area. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to fear monger or scare you or make you nervous or anything like that. I am seeing food shortages in my area. As a matter of fact, I have been to a grocery store within the last month, month and a half that did not have items I was looking for, and I have been to a local. Well, a national chain. I'm not going to mention them because I don't. I don't like to promote <clears throat> companies. But I've been to a national chain that is a Mexican grill. That's a national chain, and they are not serving one of my favorites, which is guacamole right now. So there is a there's there's a definitely a food shortage, and I'm hearing people around the country talking about how they're going to grocery stores and there are certain items that are not in the grocery stores. Now, the official story is we had so much rain in the Midwest and the farmers aren't able to farm, you know, within the time frame and the crops again got destroyed and blah, blah, blah. I totally understand that. <clears throat> but when you start eating a plant-based lifestyle, when you start cleansing your body and you start connecting to the, to the earth, to your God, to the universe, you start getting downloads and you start understanding things on another level. And if you don't know and don't believe that we are being controlled by the people who control us, by the higher powers, than the people that, that run this earth and run this globe, then you're already fighting a losing battle. So, what do you do to prepare now for times to come? And I'm going to tell you guys some things that we do currently and have always done tell you a story <clears throat> back in oh gosh this is uh, 2019 back in the summer of 2010 2009 2011 around around round there my wife and I were living in an apartment we had a nor'easter come through and that nor'easter dumped the I mean, it dumped so much rain. It wasn't even a hur It wasn't even a hurricane. It was just a major storm, and it dumped so much rain. Our street flooded to the point where it was the street was waist deep. Okay, I'm sorry, I said waist deep. I pointed to my chest. It was chest deep, and I, I'm the reason why I know because I waded through that water to go pick up my wife from work. Couldn't drive the cars. I had to walk to go get her. And we wade waded. Is that the right word? Anyway, we basically swam back home. Um, in the process of all that water, our basement where we lived flooded. I mean, I've never seen a basement flood. It flooded to the door. Now, you know when you go, get ready to walk into a basement, you go down on the ground floor, and when you open the door, you go down steps. We couldn't go into the basement because the entire basement was flooded. It was probably 10 feet of water in there. Unfortunately for us and in our building, that's where all, our, all of our electrical was located. <clears throat> Well, water and electricity don't mix, right? So it short-circuited short everything. We didn't have power for like a week, maybe a week and a half. So, at that point in time, I promised my wife and myself, and I said, you know what, we're never going to go through this. Because, I mean, can you imagine being in the city for a whole entire week, maybe a week and a half with no power, and it's the summertime? It was so hot. It was so miserable. We had so much cabin fever. <laughs> So I, I went on a quest then <clears throat> to start finding, and this is how I became a prepper. I went on that quest to start finding alternate and alternative ways to power my home in the event of that happening ever again. And I started out, to be honest with you, I started out, I went to Harbor Freight, 
some of you guys you know familiar with that that company I went to Harbor Freight and I bought this battery I don't even know if it's called this or not a battery jump start box and basically what it is it's a, it's a battery uh, it has the power of a car battery because you can hook the cables up to your car battery and you can jump start your, your car that's how I started in prepping and now it has evolved to solar panels and you know food stores and water stores and I mean, we just got so much stuff. When when we lose power now, we lose power. I'm, I'm not gonna say often, but often enough for me to have backup. When we lose power now, I hook up all our stuff, and bam, we have power. So <clears throat> that's how I kind of got started in prepping. And this this rabbit hole that you go down, it's a never-ending story. This thing keeps going on and on and on because you can never be prepared enough. Now. Would I like to have a bunker and would I like to have, you know, five years of food and, and water and all that? Yeah, I would love to have that. <laughs> Do I have that right now? No. I don't know anybody that I know that has anything like that. However, I have a saying, and I got this from my mentor. To know better is to do better. I added this. Do better until you can do better. But in the end, do better. Okay. So, <clears throat> with this food shortage, I'm looking, and I, I, it's funny, I came home today, and for some kind of reason, some kind of way, my water was shut off at my house. We had paid the bill, I called my wife, and, you know, we kind of had a little disagreement about it, I was like, you know, you didn't pay the bill, blah, 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 and we kind of had a little disagreement about it, which is fine, you know, we've patched things up now, but... You never know what the powers that be are trying to do. And think about that. Now, what if one day you come home and your power, your, your water is off? I mean, because all you got to do is just turn a couple of valves down, you know, down at the municipal and boom, nobody has water. So what if you come home, you don't have water, your neighbors don't have water, nobody can explain it. Day goes by, nobody can explain it. Two days go by, nobody can explain it. Three days, people are starting to get really thirsty. Because most people don't store water, okay? Just not one of those things that people do. Um, so, you know, what what would you do in that situation? <clears throat> and I know we're talking about food shortages, but I'm just telling you guys some things that happened to me today. And I'm always, all my spidey senses are always tingling when things are going on, especially nationwide, because I'm like, okay. What would we do if that hits our doorstep? What happens? What happens to the the plant-based home homestead preppers house when X, Y, and Z happens? How do we react? How do we respond? So those are some of the questions I want you to ask yourself. How do you react? How do you respond? Because the best reaction is never to have a reaction. Always be proactive. And this is this is this is the time now to be proactive. It's time now to lose the weight. It's time now to get in shape while the going while the going is getting good. Because when stuff happens, that's not the time to wish that you were in shape. You know, if we got a hump, and my wife and I, if we got to get out the city and we need to walk 10 to 15, 20 miles, we'd be able to do it now. A year ago, no, we wouldn't be able to do that. You know, we got bikes now. We could we could literally ride. And we did it day one when we bought our bought our bikes. We rode 12 miles one way. And 12 miles, well, no, I'm sorry, it was seven, six, six, seven miles one way, six, seven miles, six or seven miles back home. And that was day one. And we've only gotten better now. So if we need to grab our bug out bags and get out of the city, boom, we can just hop on the bikes and roll if the car is not working. Okay? Which is a whole other situation that could happen. And the roads could be backed up. Think about that. So, with this food shortage, there are, a few, there are a few things that I'm going to recommend to you. All right? I keep, and I'm going to tell you now, we are plant-based. But I'm going to tell you some of the things that we keep in our house. Just as immersion. Now, now we, can't, we are constantly restocking. So, what I want to teach you, what I want to get you prepped to doing, is constantly be buying things that you use and just, that you eat all the time. Now, see, I've learned the hard way of buying things that you don't eat. You buy things that you don't eat, they sit in your cabinet, they go bad in your pantry, you lose your money. 
buy things that you're constantly eating. That way you're constantly replenishing your stock and you're not losing any money. Every time you go to the grocery store from here on out, always, always, always buy you two to five canned goods of things that you guys like to eat. Now, I teach a plant-based lifestyle. So, when I go, I like to stock up on peanut butter. Peanut butter is a great source of good tasting food. And it doesn't take a whole bunch to fill you up. Peanut butter is awesome in an emergency situation. Stock up on you some water. Always have some emergency water. Which is more important than having emergency food. Because remember the threes. You can go three hours without shelter. I'm sorry. You go three minutes without air. Three hours without shelter. Three days without water. Three weeks without food. Remember your threes. Remember your threes. So, also, beans and rice. Beans and rice never going to go out of style. And beans and rice can be flavored however you want. You can have Mexican beans and rice. You can have Spanish beans and rice. You can have French beans and rice. I mean, you can fix beans and rice a whole kind of ways. But it's cheap. And it's a great way of just having a, a bunch of food. Because if anything happens and you got to go three or four weeks... You know, and the, God forbid if it ever happens and there's no food on the shelves at the grocery store or the corner store or wherever, then you need to have some food. All right? Now, can you fast for three weeks? You sure can because we've done it. But you need water. So keep you some water. Now, we teach great alkaline water. Water times are good. Alkaline water, high pH water, that's what you want. However, in an emergency situation, water is water. Clean, purified water, stock up on you some water. Okay? Remember, one gallon per person per day. One gallon per person per day. If you have pets, you need more water. Start growing you some food. Start growing you some food now. Get you some fruit trees. Get you some avocado trees. Get you some fig trees. Now notice, I'm not saying get a tree. Get several. Okay? And if you live in an urban environment like I do, and you don't plan on staying there for the next 20 years, you can always grow your trees in pots. Because I have 17 fruit trees in my house. When we get ready to leave, we're going to take about 13 to 14 with us. Now, there are about four or five of them that are in the ground. Oh, well, I'm just going to leave those behind. But when we get ready to leave, we're taking trees with us. Just see us what it is. It takes anywhere between two to four years for your tree to start producing for you. Learn how to can. Learn how to can that. Grow some food. Learn how to can it. Okay? Tomatoes. Tomatoes are very easy to grow. You can throw some seeds in a pot. Boom. In about two and a half months you got tomatoes you can take a a tomato slice it you can grow a tomato from a tomato learn to start growing some of your food now so that if and when you need to learn that skill it's not so hard for you to do it later and do not use things like you know don't don't take the easy route and just go get a bag of miracle Grow. learn how to work your yard learn, learn how to work the ground yourself and I'm going to give you guys another video on, you know, some of the methods that I use as far as the gardening is concerned. But I just want to, you know, let you guys know some of the things that we do, plant-based homestead prepper and wife do in order to stay prepared for what's coming. And just, you know, just keep that in the back of your mind. I'm not trying to alarm anybody. Just want you guys to be prepared. So... Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you for being here. If you like what you've heard, comment, subscribe, and share. All right? Y'all be blessed. And as always, I love you enough to tell you the truth. Take care.